Hi everyone, this is Nick from NXE Plants, and today I'm going to talk about how I get my foliage so dark. To start out, I'm going to talk about some of the darkest species slash hybrids I grow. First off here, I'm holding the Ace of Spades, which I'd consider probably the closest thing to black I grow, and as you can see, it's pretty much pitch black. It's got this beautiful blue, black, oily sheen to the leaf. Synthurium Ace of Spades from uh, Tazula. Probably the next closest species to black would be this Carla Blackie. This is the uh, hybrid of RA5 and RA10. You can see from the right angle it starts to look a little bit green, but the leaf is pretty much black and it holds the color for quite a while. Absolutely beautiful sort of matte appearance compared to the shine of the Ace of Spades. The next probably blackest species we grow is this Anthurium SP Nov DF. You can see it darkens to this beautiful, beautiful black color. This one is an emergent leaf, so it's not quite there yet. I'm trying to be real careful to not scrape it on anything. This one I say has more of a purple undertone. I'll insert some pictures where it looks a little bit clearer or more dramatic. This is Anthurium SP Nov DF. Here we've got the Hobgoblin, which I'd say is probably the last plant I grow in like the truly black category before we start to get into more of a green with a really, really dark pigmentation. This is a hybrid of Luxurians Extrasleri, Extrasleri again. This one's a little bit harder to catch. It's more clear on this leaf because this one isn't quite hard yet. You can see it's got this almost gray look to the black. Quite pretty. And again, nice sheen, but more on the velvet side. Now we're going to get into what I like to call the hyperpigmented green, which is sort of the, how the paps tend to look black. Here we've got the Re Gardens. And again, like a very, very dark green. Super similar to the Papalaminum Fort Sherman XL right here. Again, it's got that very dark black green. And similarly, we see like the bluish black dark green on this Valdemar XL from Woohoo Tropicals. Beautiful color. Now I'm going to go over a little bit about what I do to get my plants to look darker. So the first thing I want to talk about, like get it out of the way, is your plant can only get as dark as its genetics allow. Uh, you can't turn a green plant black necessarily, but what you can, I find, do is make a plant that has a very, very dark emergence stay dark for a long time. So really it's about maximizing what's already there. And here are some of the tricks I use to do that. A good example of how genetics really matter is something like the Tazul Ace of Spades. When they're producing it, only about 5% of seedlings, according to them, get this truly black color. And that's what they sell as the Ace of Spades. You frequently see a lot of x selves, which can look very Ace of Spades, but very few get this truly black color to them. I got a lot of questions after my last video about the lighting I used to grow the plants in. So I just want to show a little bit of how the lighting affected some of these leaves differently on this plant. This leaf, I'd say, is probably the darkest leaf it currently has. This one it was put out in about 60 ppfd, whereas this one right here, again it probably still looks perfectly black. I'd say it is nearly black, just a slightly lighter. It came out in about 120 ppfd. The same sort of light this one is emerging in right now. Another example of that is again on this guy right here. This leaf up here is emerging in more like 60 ppfd. It's a little bit darker. This one however came out in 120 ppfd Actually, probably a little bit higher than that since it grew forward into the grow light. And again, it still looks very dark, even when compared to another leaf that grew in darker conditions over here. You can see they're still, you know, nearly the same color. I sort of find light is less of a factor than it's made out to be in getting this dark foliage. I find sort of nutrition and general care to be a lot more impactful for keeping the dark leaves. Another common thing you hear about getting dark foliage is that cooler temperatures help. And like, I'll acknowledge I do grow in probably what is as considered cooler temperatures to a lot of growers. I'm up in the Pacific Northwest on Vancouver Island. So I say my grow tent maxes out even in summer, maybe 30 degrees versus in this time of year, it'll swing from about 18 Celsius to 26, 27 degrees Celsius. So pretty consistently cool temperatures year round. A fun thing is cold can actually do some funky things to the leaf color. So I just want to show this leaf right here has this sort of weird oily look to it. And this one was from a night I let one of the tents get a little too cold. And then this is what happens, you know, when it was out on a heat mat looking completely fine. This last part of the video is going to be what I view as the most important part for getting dark foliage, and that's feeding your plants properly so they have all of the available nutrients they need to make the color compounds and for their good health and general well-being. I use a multi-part nutrient solution, and in the previous video I showed how all of my plants, for the most part, are in reservoir pots with wicks from the nutrient solution. Sort of the basics of nutrient solution in hydroponics is you usually have a three-part which provides your essentials for growing, flowering, and the micros. To that I add calcium magnesium and a silica product. This is monosilicic acid. This formula of silica is the best for bioavailability. The reason you want to add these parts is 
all of these essential nutrients are needed in the uptake in other nutrients. So a good example of that is a lot of people don't fertilize with enough sulfur. And thoriums need quite a lot of sulfur to uptake the magnesium, which they need to not sort of look bleached out and veiny. Properly feeding your plant, I find, helps preserve that emergent color saturation for a really long time. You can notice the plants start to draw back the color as they're putting out new leaves. And that color you see leaving the leaf is the nutrients it needs to put out new growth. So if you can supplement enough, you can sort of overcome that plant's natural inclination to pull back those older leaves. To this multi-part nutrient solution, I add a liquid myco and bacterial inoculants. These bacteria and mycorrhizal fungus digest the different nutrients and make them more available to the plant. I find this is also helpful in preventing different nutrient buildups and it allows the plants to exist really long term in these environments very healthily. They get nice fuzzy roots. I think this is like a step that I wouldn't necessarily skip. Next up I add a fumic and fulvic acid. This is diamond nectar from General Hydro. It provides good uh, food for these guys which then break it down into stuff for the plants. In general I like this for my anthurium. I find it makes them look a little bit oilier. And the last sort of part I want to talk about today is I add a kelp product. I'm a big fan of straight up Super Thrive. It's good for root development and it helps provide some hormones and other stuff that the plants benefit from. Mm -hmm. 